בעזרת השם, בעזרת השם. אוקיי, בעזרת השם, today in מסכת שבת, we are starting at למד ה' עמוד ב' at the two dots, about a third of the way down the page. למד ה' עמוד ב', תנוע בנן שש תקיעות. That's where we're going to start. We're going to have two sections in today's learning. בעזרת השם, we'll finish the parak, למד ו' עמוד ב' at the top of the page. The first section we're going to deal with is this idea that there were six tkiot they used to do Erev Shabbat to, to inform the people, see amongst other things, Shabbat is here and there's certain things they had to stop at each of the six sounds. We'll see, we'll go through it. And the second section we'll deal with today is, very interesting, how there were certain words that were changed after the Chorban and the Nafkaminas, certain terminologies and the Nafkaminas in knowing that difference. Okay, so Be'ezat Hashem, let's get started. The two dots, Lamed Hamad Bet. We had discussed that Erev Shabbat, we discussed actually previously, there was an inyan that Rava told his attendant, his shamis, he told him, you should stop when you see the sun uh, above the... Rava told who? His attendant, his attendant, like his gabai. Oh, yeah? He told him, yeah. And we learned at the end of yesterday that you should stop doing melechai, you should light the Shabbat candles when you see the, the sun over the palm trees. What he oh, was saying, yeah. what he was saying was, is that if you can't exactly determine when Shabbat is... Since you did not... You should stop a little earlier. Right. Understanding day. right. So what we're gonna pick up with today, which is a very, very beautiful minhag they used to do, and they still do this in some cities, they actually had a minhag to blow shofar, which was that they would make six kolot, it's really tkiyat, ruat, tkiyat, ruat, tkiyat, tkiyat, ruat, tkiyat. So two times tkiyat, ruat, tkiyat, six sounds, Erev Shabbat, and each of the six sounds was a different implication. We're going to go through what each of them was. Meaning he was telling different people, now is time for you to stop. Very interesting. Today I know in Yerushalayim they do the siren. It's a similar idea. Some people idea. need one tkiyat. Some people need yeah, two here, sounds. Yeah, I hear. It's like the snooze on the alarm clock. <laughs> So the Gemara actually says it's more than that. That each one had something special. We'll go through it. At least three of them, we'll see. So Tanu Abanan says the Breita. Sheish tkiyot tok in Erev Shabbat. There were six sounds that were made Erev Shabbat. Again, really it was tkiyah, teruah, tkiyah. Teruah is also called tkiyah. It means the sound. Tkiyah, teruah, tkiyah. Tkiyah, teruah, tkiyah. Six sounds. Okay. Erev Shabbat. Okay, so Rishonah, the first one. Lehaftil et ta'amim lacha shebesadot. It was done to stop the people from the work that was done out in the fields. Meaning, you have people that are working out in the fields, so those people need a little bit more of an advance notice because they have to clean up their, their tools, they have to stop their work and come into the city before Shabbat happens. So their first sound was, it was a symbol for them, now it's time for me to stop doing what I'm doing and head towards the city. Now, it wasn't just stum, they knew that was what I'm supposed to do. The first sound, I'm coming into the city, stopping it my work. It makes more sense because they are very far. Exactly. Shnia, the second one, means the trua, the second sound. Lehaftil ir v'chanuyot. It meant that the people in the city, the, work, the shop owners... Every shop go home. It's not too far from their house, so stop your business and go home and start getting ready for Shabbat. Also, because the stuff. also there is a... Problem with melacha after chatzot ayom, no? There is such a yeah, yeah. There is such an idea. It's not appropriate to be involved in melacha, but okay, and maybe that's a dechumra. Let's see. But the point is, even in the, um, even in the, uh, in in the city, that was time for them to shut down their businesses mm -hmm. and stop work. Shlishit, the third sounds. This is the tkiya now. Lehadliketaner div Rabbi Natan. So Rabbi Natan says that was the sign yeah. of hadlakataner. To make it to, no, to light, light to light. Shabbat, oh. To light Nerot Shabbat. Okay. So you have the first sound is to stop the people That's outside in the fields. Second sound is the business owners inside. Three, time to light Nerot Shabbat. Okay. okay. Now that's the opinion of Rabbi Natan. Rabbi Yudana Si Omer, Rabbi Yudana Si argues, and he said, Shlishit Lechalot Stefilin. He says, no. The third sound was not to light Nerot Shabbat yet. That was the fourth sound, actually. He yelled, the fourth sound was to light Nerot Shabbat. So what was the third sound? It was to take off tefillin. They used to wear tefillin Shem all day. Allah. So you have to take off your tefillin because now it's almost Shabbat. And then the fourth sound was already Okay. Now, this is interesting. 
So you have three sounds so far. The third one or the fourth one was Hadlakat Aner. And then, between the third and the fourth sound, they would wait, right, the third and the fourth sound, right? Shohei, okay. They would wait enough time to roast the small fish. So it's a little bit of time. The time roast. Of, of roasting or... The time it takes to roast... Roasting. The time it takes to roast... A, not that you have to do that. The time it takes to roast the small fish or enough time that it takes to put the dough in the oven before Shabbat. Now, remember we learned this halacha back on Yutet Amud Bet. You're allowed to put dough in the oven on Erev Shabbat. We said either the part facing the fire or the part against the wall, that it has to be crusted over. So it means, talking about it, I don't know, maybe a minute or a few minutes, they would wait that you could do a small melacha. That's really what we're talking about here. So between the third and the fourth tekiyot, they would wait a short amount of time. So anybody that wants to finish up the melachot that they need to do, they have a few minutes to finish it up. Now, the rush points something out here very interesting because then it says, that the, the Brayta finishes, v'tokeya umeria v'tokeya, they would do the final tekiyot truat kia, which is four, five, six, v'shovet. And then what does it mean? Stop melacha. Shovet. Beautiful. Shovet. And then Shovet, they stop doing melacha. So says the Rosh, wait a second. You see from this, they were still doing melacha after the Katanel. But you are not Mekabel Shabbat. Oh. So then this brings in a very interesting discussion, which is, is Hadlakat Aner Kabbalat Shabbat already? And if it is, of course, you can't do melacha after. Or could you still do melacha after Hadlakat Aner. It depends by your Kavana. But I'm saying, what is the Gemara implying? For sure you could. That's what the Gemara is mashma. According to, but no way. You understand? Because it says, but the third... Who is, who is the Tokea? Tokea is, we're going to see later, there was a designated person, like the Chazana Knesset, like he was the attendant of the shul. He would stand on a roof, a tall roof in the middle of the city and do the Tkiot. So, he's, he's the one that Tokea, mm-hmm. but... The, no, but the point I'm the is, the person in the house that hear that kiot. Correct. I'm doing few melachot before, right? Correct. We said like, uh, if I'm in the field, I go back home. If I'm in the store, I close Correct. the store, go home. Correct. But it seems like there is pretty much only two things. Like you just shovet me melacha and light the. So candles. we're gonna the oh, next take off your feeling. So it's very interesting. The next brayta is gonna elaborate more on this. We'll see more on what they would stop and what they would start. But the point that you do see from the brayta is it seems like they were doing melacha after ad lakataner. So the Rosh says that there is this concept, and this is discussed in Halakha, if you could make a Tanai. Can a woman who's lighting Nerot Shabbat make a Tanai? I'm going to light Nerot Shabbat, Meaning but not be Mekabel Shabbat, Shabbat, and then I'll accept Shabbat later, which does seem to be accepted. Because idea, it's still a day. Because it's still the day, exactly. It's not yet actually this man of Shabbat. But for the husband, Bichlal, the husband could accept Shabbat when she lights candles, but he also could accept Shabbat later when it's Kabbalat Shabbat and Tefillah, or if he verbally says I'm accepting Shabbat. The point is, you do see there is this idea you could do Melacha following Nerot Shabbat, assuming you haven't accepted Shabbat. That's the point. Let's continue. Amar Rav Shem ben Gamliel. Rav Shem ben Gamliel says, Mana Selahem. But the point is, which I, I just found this a little bit fascinating, is the guys will be working out in the fields. They're digging and they're plowing, and, and they hear the first sound. Shut down shop and go home. It was probably, a system. They probably know. Right. You know, what's the, 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 right. the, the right. tomb? Probably, but the point is that there was a system. You, you had a store, let's say. Right. You know that your set, Shabbat is usually at 5. You, you don't close the store at 4.50, you close the store at 3, at 2.30. True, true. It could be also they didn't have clocks. So for them, they didn't know exactly. So this was a system that they would know. They say it getting darker, it's lighter, darker. They couldn't tell exactly. So this was a siman. Amar Rav Shem Gamliel, the Brayta continues. Rav Shem Gamliel said the following: Mana aselahem lebavliim. What can we do for bavliim? He 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 said, I don't like what the Babylonian Jews do because what do the Babylonian Jews do? Remember, we said the halacha or the minhag was tekiya teruah tekiya teruah tekiya teruah tekiya. That's what they used to do erev Shabbat as the siman to stop. Shabbat is coming. Tekiah, teruat kiah, tekiah, teruat kiah. There are six sounds. Shesh kolot, exactly. Well, 
Yeah, that's what, that's what we just said, exactly. So Rosh Hashim and Gamil said in Bavel, they did something think. different. What, what did they do? They were holding between the first and the second. There was a break in between, exactly. Kedei, the small melacha. We'll go over it again in the next fight, actually. That's okay. what they do in Yerushalayim, actually. There is two uh, sirens. And then what? One is usually around like 40 minutes before Shabbat, and the second one is like maybe the, 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 10 the, minutes before the Shabbat. First, the, the first thing. The first so the it second. could be, it makes sense, because if you're working out, I'm just, it could be, that's probably like a zecher. It's a similar idea to what yes. they did that's here. That's what I remember. If you're working out in the fields, you need a few minutes to get home. It's not like uh, the first, you the take first a shower, you know, it's, it makes that, sense. It makes more sense. It makes sense. Yeah. The first case for the field. That's what we yes. said, we said. The second one, you missed it. Close, close that's, what we said. that's exactly what we said. Unbelievable. Close the store. We're going to get there, actually. The hold on, hold on, because the next right is going to elaborate more. So let's see. But says of Shem Ben Gamliel, lehem What can we do for the Babylonians? He didn't like them in Hagen Bavel. Why? Shetokin oh. umeriin vishoftin mitoch meriin. Because the way he understood it is they do tkia and teruah, and then they stop the melacha at the teruah. Means it sounds like what he's saying is they don't do the second, the third kia like they're supposed to. That's what it sounds like Roshim Megamil was saying. Because it seems that basically what it was just spoke. If a person, let's say, don't have a store, don't have a field. Uh, okay, I mean, he's we, just taking over. Roshim Megamil seems to be saying is is that they would only do five kolot and not six because we really again it was tekiya teruat kia. And then that was the end of it. So he was saying the way he under, we're understanding him now is that they only did kiat trua tkiat kiat That's not the minag. That's not the minag. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So there is five. Exactly. That's what it sounds. But like. why? Because the first set is first set was the same. But he's saying is the second set was only tkiat trua. Yeah, that's not right. Okay. So the Gemara interjects and says, wait a second. They didn't like interrupts the bright tough from it. Tokino Mary in Havadu Hamisha. But that would only be five. What do you mean that that's what their minhag was? Five is not what we said. We said it's supposed to be six. So Ella the Gemara says it must be that Roshim Gamliel understood there were six. But what he understood was they switched the order. What do you mean they switched the order? Shetokin vechozrin vetokin umeriin vishoftin mitoch meriin. Means they did tekiya tekiya. Instead of tekiya truat tekiya, they did tekiya tekiya truat at the end. And then they would stop the melacha from the second set. That's when they would stop from the trua. So that's what Rishim Gamil was saying. He was saying, why are they switching the minhag? The Maybe. minhag is tekiya teruah tekiya. Why are they doing tekiya tekiya trua? Maybe the siman. Now, why would they do that? What's the logic in that, by the way? Why would they want to switch it for that? What's the logic? Because you hear so tekiya. They make six. You hear, you hear, you they hear, still did six. Different, different, they switched the order. Why they switch the order? Why? This is my no, no. My shot. No, let's hear. You hear tekiya. Okay, you might think it's the first one. Excellent. The Mefarshim point that out. What is it? They said, the Mefarshim say it? here, <laughs> that the, <laughs> the Jews in Bavel, they don't know if it's the first <laughs> Kia or the, the second Kia. So therefore, in order that people know when they have to stop in Acha, do a Truati and that's different. Different. Smart. That's what they, so that's what their Cheshbon was. Rav Shemir Gamil was still saying, I don't like it. They're changing the Minhag. It's not right. So the Gemara answers, the Brayta finishes off, Minhag Avotein Biyadein, you can't challenge it. That was their Minhag, Minhag Avotein, that was the Minhag of their ancestors in Bavel, and that's what it was. Okay, that's the end of the Brayta. Matni le Rav Yudah le Rav Yitzchak Brei. Rav Yudah taught Rav Yitzchak his son the following uh, halacha. Remember we learned Rav Yudah and Rav Yitzchak. She halak alabu shelo. Right, so he's not halak here, but the, the, the Gemara says Rav Yudah taught Rav Yitzchak his son the following. Actually, the second sound was to light the candle. Now, the problem is the second sound. The second oh, sound, oh, the second oh. of the six kolot was to light the candle. So the Gemara says, Keman, the problem is that doesn't come out like any of the Tanaim. Right. So, lo karabi the lo karabi udanasi. That's not like Rabbi Natan. It's not like Rabbi Udanasi. Because Rabbi Natan said the third one is to light the candles. Rabbi Udanasi said it's the fourth one. So, Ella, so the Gemara says it must be we, had, we didn't get the story right. Really, it must be Rabbi Udan taught his son Rabbi Yitzchak, Shlishit Ladli Getaner. The third one is the symbolism to light the candle. And Keman karabi Natan, that would be like Rabbi Natan. That works out. Okay, so now let's see. Because the third one. in the second. Rabbi Natan said the third one is Ladeke Taner, and that actually works out like Rabbi Natan. But we said Shnia. And that's we changed the story. You misunderstood the story. Really, it must be Rabbi Yudah told the son of Yitzchak the third one is to light the candle. So Ravante Tasipu. That's what we're saying, basically. We got the wrong story. The real story was he said the third one. Okay. 
Okay. Right there, let's go. Nanu Braita. Tanat Ver Vishmal. Vishmal the Dver Vishmal taught the following Braita. Now this really it's a similar idea to what we just said before, but it's more barichut. So let's see. Shesh Kiyo Tokin Erev Shabbat. There were six sounds made Erev Shabbat, like this. Itchilit kwat kiari shona. They would start the first sound again, tkiya. Nimnu haum dim basad mil adoru milachavosh milasot kol milachash basadot. So the people standing outside in the fields, they were a little bit of a distance. They would stop digging and plowing and doing any of the labor in the fields. That was the sign for them to stop. Now this is a very interesting point here, side point. The ones that are closer to the city, right? you have workers out in the fields. The ones who are closer to the city are not supposed to enter the city until they wait for the ones that are farther from the city as well. Because maybe it's a sign for And then they the enter together. Now why? Why would they have to wait? Why don't the ones who are closer come in? The ones that are farther come in after. What's the difference? Maybe it's and Shaun. There is no Shaun. There's no watch. Okay, but what's the difference? So those These guys the... want to come in quicker. Why, those... why do they have to wait for the guys behind Let's them? Let's say this one, the guy is not Meria. Not Meria. Or Yeria. The Trua has nothing to do with them. The Tkia is what symbolizes it's a part, them. Yeah. Probably... Maybe it's a symbolic sign for those in the, with the stores that they see the people Ma, 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 the Ma Keshe la stores. We're not talking about the stores. We're talking about the people in the fields. Right? You work in a field closer to the city. I work in the next field. You have to wait for me to come into the city with you. Maybe right? somebody didn't hear. Oh, you want me so you could tell him to come in? So, all, us, all the guys Remember in the they field. All it sounds like they would do it in a way that everybody would hear. That's they the whole point. They do it probably in a point because people in the field... If they know that the one that close not gonna enter until I'm coming, they're gonna hurry up and to come. Oh, that's a good horror. Right. Yeah, otherwise, very nice. you know when you know now they enter. Say, listen, I, I have to go because my brother. Would you make that? You know, I can, <laughs> it's a guarantee. It's a kind that's of a gather to pull you to, from the field. The, it motivates the guys farther. It's very hard to leave the field that's when you walk in. You know, and, you know, half half it would be more of a pressure for everyone to come in. No yes. one's gonna delay. Yes. So Rashi says something so interesting. I would not have thought. Lachat <laughs> Shabbat. Rashi says, look at Rashi. The Kansu Kulam Kechad, Shaloyach Shedu and Ichnasim Bachona Lomar, She Askubim Lachtan, Achash Shamu Kola Shofar, She Ena Kol Makiri Mikrovim Rechokim. If the first people come in and the second people come in later, so the people in the city might see, why are they coming in 10 minutes later? They obviously didn't listen to Takanat Chazal. It's like Marta Ayin. So what they do is, they didn't listen to, and they're. Really, the pshat is they were 10 minutes away. They were a little bit farther. So in order that they don't suspect, everybody should walk in together. It's interesting. Right, that somebody will think bad about the other one. It's a very, very interesting idea. I wouldn't have thought about that. But Yocha is saying, I hear a little more, is that the guys, that if they need to come in together, everyone's going to be coming in because you'll pressure them to come in. It's much harder to pull a guy from the field for plying and everything than a guy that in close, in close the store. Much mm. harder. Because there is more time, Tachlis. That's the point. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I hear, I hear, it's hard. I mean, in the store too. If you're also working in the store, dealing with people and selling and buying, and it's also hard. So the Gemara Brayta continues. Okay. So the first sound <clears throat> to bring the people from the field, stop the work. But still, the stores were open in the city. The the vendors. And the Tresin Munachin, Rashi says, interesting. They used to take the shutters from the windows, like the covers of the windows, like these flat panels. Can, can, can. They would flat. They would put it flat, and they would put spices and things like that for people to come buy off of. It was like big plates, basically. Can, can. They would use it as a presentation to sell. So the stores were still functioning. It's like in Machane Yehuda, you go and they have all these things laid out. It was still going, full, full service. That was in the city. So what happened next? They would start the second Kiya. They would remove those shutters. And they would lock up the stores, meaning that the stores would be shut down. Okay. However, people still had hot water boiling. What's that? In the house, yeah. Still, they were doing Melacha. means they still had the hot water boiling on the stove. Rashi says they would use this hot water to mix wine. 
Interesting. You know that they would the wine was very strong, so they would use some of this water yeah. to mix wine. Right? It says, Maim chamin limzog bahen yain So they still, still had hot water. Today. You, you could still, still do it today. You could still do it today, but the thing is, it's they don't need it as much today. today. Right. So they still had hot water boiling, and they had food cooking on the stove. So what happened? They blew the third sound. They removed the food from the stovetop. And if they had to do atmana, again, in a mutar way, obviously, we learned, we learned about this. Mosif hevel, not mosif hevel, in a permitted way, they could do it then. And now they lit nerot shabbat. Okay, like we said, the third sound, they lit nerot shabbat. Now we learned. Even though they lit Nerot Shabbat, there still is a permission to do Mlacha afterwards. That's the point. Meaning, if you make a Tanai, there's ways of getting around it, but that's actually what we see from here. And then again, they would wait the amount of time between the third and fourth sound to roast a small fish. So it was like a small Mlacha, or enough time to put the bread in the oven. Remember, we said they used to put like the Lafa on the side of the oven, which is a Mlacha until it uh, crusts over. So the point is, they would wait a little bit of time between the third sound and then the next sound. And then, they would do tkiyah, tru'ah, tkiyah. And that was it. Everyone would stop doing melacha. So it's just elaborate. That, to live this, this is yeah, unbelievable. I was thinking about it. Imagine if they would do this and everybody who's working, all the Jews who are working, puts down, puts down their, their tools. In Yerushalayim, you feel it. I mean, unfortunately. You, you go to Merkaz Zahir. Yeah. Friday, um, you do feel, you know, you see the stores like around two or three o'clock, even in the summer, close. The streets are getting pretty empty here. You're, you're driving in the streets, you know, in the main streets in the ocean. Yeah, no, I hear that, I hear that. In Geula, Meashayim, forget about it. They close the street also. You cannot even pass by with the car. We don't. And you don't have to It's so, you know, you do feel it, you know. Different minds. Shabbat is coming. Yom Shishi is here. True. Some people don't even work Yom Shishi. I think it's an unbelievable thing. You think about raising your children in, in Miami Beach, you know. Uh, you raise your kids in a society that's a Jewish, a pitora society. It's a totally different experience, like Gamre without, com completely disconnected. I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know if you have it anywhere today like that, I mean, like this, like no, this level. No, no. This is in Yemot HaMashiach, no, it's going to no. be like this. You're right, in Yerushalayim, it's similar, but it's not, uh, no, you still yeah, have, uh, saying, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, what the God described you. I'm saying every no, Jew is going to put down his, his shovel and put down his and come into the city, Maybe shut down in all the shops. Maybe right, right. 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 in, in my parents' neighborhood, it, it, is getting more not like this deep. though like this no. the whole population stops for they, you do feel uh, you still see people walking with their dogs or just driving the car here and there but you do feel that there is like a silence in the street yeah no, I know I know yeah for sure uh, you you do feel it, yeah. it's a different you do. Olam, yeah. you're getting to a different galaxy. That happens to be Mir is like a city in and of itself. Aitashama, the Mir. It's in, you know, the stop, Shifte Israel, that area? Shifte Israel, in a... Uh... Yeshivat Mir, it's next to uh, Malon Etza Zayit, the Olive Tree Hotel, right? I'm not even sure, but... It, like it's, you, uh, from Vish Mispar Echad, there, next to... The whole to... city is from people, like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's... So you feel it, but, but... It's not like that everywhere. Amen. Ah, amen, amen. Let's continue. Now, Amar Ab Yossi Bar Bichanina. And I just want to tell you something, Chaver. I was a little bit confused by this because Rav Yossi Bachanina is an Amora. But we're going to see that from the Gemara, it seems to be this is a continuum, Hemshech of the Braita. So it could be there's another Rav Yossi Bachanina who is a Tana. I don't know. But I'm going to go with that because it makes sense based Maybe on the later Gemara. I looked, I couldn't find. Amor Rav Yossi Bachanina. Rav Yossi Bachanina continues the Braita. Shamati, I heard. And this is a very important point. If somebody wants to light Nerot Shabbat after the six sounds, it's over, he is still allowed to light Nerot Shabbat. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it means the six sounds already happened, there's still time you could light Nerot Shabbat. Okay? The Avad, but he could, it's okay. How do I know that, says Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Hanina? Because, as we said, the fellow who blew the shofar, Rashi says, if you're very interesting, Shaya Gag Miuchad Begovair, and a tall 
place in the middle of the city, what would he do with the shofar after he made those noises? He had to do six sounds. Oh, it's Muktze. Umisham olichol beito. Alma says Rashi, Akati lo nakit, Kdushat Shabbat alayu. So he says like this, Rabbi Yosef Abichanina says, It must be that even after the six sounds, Shabbat Melacha hasn't started, because if so, how could the Chachamim allow the Chazana Knesset who makes the sounds to bring the shofar to his house? Now, this isn't an issue of Hotza'ah. Say there's an Arab that's. It's muktzeh. The shofar is muktzeh. That's what we're understanding now. Muktzeh klisha melach doli yisur. We'll speak about it in a minute. But the Gemara is saying is it must be the fact that the Chachamim said he could take it home. Must be that the yisur Shabbat hasn't started yet. So memele, just like that, if you want to light nerot Shabbat after six tiot, you're also allowed to. But besides that, think about it. The guy they hear the three tiot. Yeah. One two. You won't tell me the moment you did the sixth one, no more melacha? Yeah, you could say. It, it's very hard. Why, I tell why, you why, why? Because everything you prepare, you didn't light the candle yet, right? You take the glow. No, you did, thing. you did. After you the have third to one, give me, you have to give me. The, the third one, you lit the candle. Let's go. The third if one. The, if you're in the middle of the melacha, between the second and the third. No, no. You have to light the candle. Third was lighting the candle. The third one was lighting the candle. You light the candle. The sixth like, one time, was It takes time to light the candle, no? Okay, a few minutes. So I'm one. saying it's impossible. Oh, oh, oh. It, it doesn't was, make it sense. It could be there was 15 minutes between the third and the fourth. The Holy Yod Shaya Amesh Slay Dakot between the third and the fourth. Doesn't no, say. The, the, no, the, no, the third, it's only for the, the business. Of it. First, but the no, 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 no. The first one was for the people in the fields. Second the second Chaliot. one was for the people Stones. in the fields. The third one was stop melacha, meaning and light the candles. Take the stuff off. Now you could continue still doing melacha, but you already already lit Nerot Shabbat. You already lit Nerot Shabbat. Uh-huh. And then at some point later, let's say five minutes later, ten minutes later, Tkiyah, Truat Tkiyah, and then Shritat, you have to stop doing melacha altogether. So says Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Hanina, the fact that we know the Chachamim allow the Chazana Knesset to go home and put his shofar at home, must be allowed to do melacha so you could light the candles after the sticks. Let me just finish the sentence. Okay. One second. Shared natnu chachamim shi'ul chazana knesset lo'olich shofar ha'ol ha'beito because they allow him time to put his shofar at home and it's muktzeh. So it must be allowed to light Nerot Shabbat after the sticks one. Sizer v'yosi babi chanina. Very good. Makes sense. Good. But we spoke yeah. in the sugya before no. about Ben Hashmashot. Okay. This one is before Ben Hashmashot, right? B'chaorah. So anyway, the, uh, the yeah. Mibarot Yom, anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, so why, right. what, what's the point? Well, that's of, the discussion. Why are we speaking about Muktzeh here? This is the discussion. When the Chachamim made a Geder, they said, the sixth one, you have to stop Melacha. Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Hanina says a Chidush. He says, actually, you are allowed to light Nerot Shabbat after that. How do I know? Because the Chazan HaKnesek could put a shofar at home. So that's Muktzeh. Last year, last year, something. So that's that's the way they're saying. Let's continue. So Amru Lo. Now they changed the gear. Say Amru Lo. So the Chachamim said back to Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Chanina. The problem with what you're saying, imkain if so, natata dvarecha leshiurim. It's an expression. What does it mean? You give your words for measures. What does it mean? When the Chachamim make a takana or a gzera, they always try to make it the same in all places. It shouldn't be. It depends on the situation, and it'll be different. But says the Chachamim to Rabbi Yossi Babi Chani, say like this, you're telling me that people could do melacha after the sixth kiyat. Why? Because the Chazana Knesset could go put a shofar at home. But at Lefize, what will come out if the Chazana Knesset's house is two minutes away in that city? So then the people could continue melacha for two minutes after the sixth kiyat. Mm. Let's say it's five minutes away in that city. You could continue melacha and light the candles five minutes after the tkiah. The problem is, that means the takana wasn't created universal, the but same it's everywhere. The for the, so therefore, the one second. So, no, that's the point. Hagufa. The that's what it's saying. You can't bring a raya from that because if that's true, every city will have a different amount of time based on how far the Chazana Knesset's home is, is distant. But it's a... It's so one second, one second. Ella, so, no, but that point, Rabbi Yosef Rechanina was saying, everyone is allowed to do melacha after the sixth, taloi on the chazana knesset, putting his shofar at home. Who said it? That, Rabbi Yosef Rechanina, that's what he seems to be saying. As kol achayot al chazan? That's the point. No, so no, that's no, the no. kasha they're asking on him. The kasha, the chacham is saying, Rabbi Yosef Rechanina, what you're saying, if his house is three minutes away, they could continue lighting candles for three minutes. Five minutes away. This is a very difficult thing to say. They make such a vague takana. No. So, Ella, so therefore the Chachamim argue and they say Ma, like I this. Just to, 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 
Do I need? Oh, so Ella said the Chachamim argue with Rabbi Yosef Chanina, and they say, no, you're wrong, Rabbi Yosef Chanina. Makom tzanua yesh lo the Chazan Knesset berosh gago. There was a small private place on the roof where he blew the shofar. Sheshah minya shofaro, and he would put his shofar there. Meaning he didn't have time to bring it home. He wasn't allowed. It was muktzeh. He wasn't allowed to walk home and bring it home. Rather, he put it somewhere in a private place on his roof. Lefiche, and this is the important point for the next point. Lefiche, and metaltilin, lo et shofar, velo et chatzotzot. Because you're not allowed to carry shofar on Shabbat, it's muktze, as well as chatzotzot, trumpets on Shabbat. They're both muktze. So therefore, the Chachamim are arguing on Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina, and let's just understand this. If that's true, he's not allowed to carry it home. So are you allowed to light Nerot Shabbat after the sixth one? No. no, you're not allowed to the chauva. You're not allowed to. He had to put it down right away, and it's already Shabbat Shvita. You have to stop there. It sounds like they're arguing, and you sowed then it would come out. You're not allowed to rely on him putting it at home because he's not allowed to so carry it. shofar or chatzotzot. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the prophet, it's not the same Rabbi Yossi spoke about here fine. Rabbi Yossi, no, Rabbi Yossi is a, a ton of Oh, that's the so because he spoke about here fine. <laughs> so we, probably the, the tkiah, the sixth tkiah, is very late. It's not maybe audio. I know, it was right before Shabbat, the Chalva. So now, well, Brayta 1, just one second. What comes out in the Fize, Brayta number 1 tells us, you're not allowed to be metaltel. Ein metaltelin. Shofar. And? Chatzot Zvot. On Shabbat. Asur, asur letaltel. Ein metaltelin, it's asur. Okay? That's Brayta number 1. Asur letaltel. Let's keep this in mind. So, what comes out is, the Fizet, just like he's not allowed to bring the Shofar or the Chatzatzot home, also people are not allowed to do Melacha, they're not allowed to light Nevot Shabbat after the sixth Kiyah. That's what would seem to come out from here. Yeah, what did you want to say, Yochan? Don't, uh, yeah. I, I look yeah. Russia, No, I, look, I at, don't look ahead, don't look ahead. We're I understand what the... So now, now the Fizet, it would come out. What's, let's just speak about this for a second. What is the idea of uh, Shofar and Chatzot Zvot. What There is actually a chiluk between them. Uh-huh. Oh, so what's the chiluk between we them? We spoke about it in Masechet Tanit, I think. No, Rosh Hashanah. Oh, we just spoke about the Sinyan, but Mechalva, what is the problem of this on Shabbat? It's Muktze. And what type of Muktze is that? It's Klish Melachto Le'isu. It's a vessel that's used primarily for something that's a su. Okay? Now, there is a chiluk between them. What is the chiluk between them? Chatzotzrot, there's no permissible usage on Shabbat. At all. At all. There's no way that you can use that in a permissible way. In that a normal shofar was allowed. No. no. Shofar, a very interesting thing. No, We're going to see in a minute. It. If Shabbat was that, that, that's not, the point is, is that that's not a permissible usage on Shabbat. It's because you don't hold a Vesu'e Shvut in the Beit HaMikdash. But the whole story. idea of Shofar was because of the Reshut. The, one second, one second. That's Shvut. Hold on, hold on. Shofar itself could be used for davar mutar b'shabbat. What is the davar mutar? Since it's curved, shofar, trumpet is straight. Shofar is curved. They could scoop water in the shofar and feed it to a baby. Ah, uh, like the hammer with the nuts. Exactly. So it's klish melachto yesu, but there is davar mutar, and therefore actually, there's more of a logic to say shofar should be allowed to be used on Shabbat, or sorry, moved on Shabbat, I should say, more than chatzotzot, which doesn't have any permissible usage. Okay, but what comes out, right, that number one is telling us is that you can't move either of them. Okay? Right, number two. Now the problem is, let's continue. Vehatanya, the problem is we have a second Brayta that says Shofar mitaltel vechatzotzot en amitaltelin. Actually, exactly like I just explained, is that Shofar could be moved on Shabbat, chatzotzot are not allowed to be moved on Shabbat. So Brayta number two says Mutar letaltel Shofar, but asur for chatzotzot. So now it comes out of Stira. What's the pshat? So, Amar Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef is an Amora. He says, Lo kashia, no problem. Very interesting chiluk. Kan bi yachid, kan bi If the shofar is owned by a yachid, that's the second brighta. So like we said, it has a way that it could be used in a permitted way. What is it? To feed water to a baby. Memele, uh-huh. even though it's klishim lachdoli, so it has a permissible way to be used. So you could move it. But if it's owned by the tzibur, you can't use the shofar of the tzibur for your personal use. Please close the door. Habibi, close the door, please. So the shofar of the tzibur cannot be used 
by, a, by an individual. So Memele doesn't have a permissible use. Memele, that's the first bright, Asir Letaltel, also the shofar. So Amar Le Abaye, Abaye turned to Rabbi Yosef, who was his Rebbe, and he said, Rebbe, I don't understand. Uviyachid lemai chazi. Here, what are you saying? Why is it, what is it usable for as a yachid? Because, as I explained, it's permitted to give water to a child in that way so you can use it for a shofar of yachid. The problem is question number one. And ani is someone who's taloi on the tzibur. So you could actually use the shofar of the tzibur to give a baby who's an ani from that shofar. So there is a permissible use for the shofar of the tzibur on Shabbat. So why would the first b'raita then say, it's asur letaltel? There is a davar mutar theoretically with that. So that can't be the chilu. Question number one. Vitu. And furthermore, says Abaye, <laughs> the other issue here is, we actually have b'raita number three yeah. that's not like one and two. Yeah. What does it say? Hadetanya. <laughs> the b'raita says, <laughs> it says, kishem <laughs> shemetaltelin et shofar it comes out what is that the third bright dust says that you're not allowed to, just like you're allowed to move shofar you're also allowed to move but money who's that author let's put that in so now it comes out it says but it would appear that you can't answer like you're saying that really it's one shita it's just different cases of tzibu and yachid it looks like from this that there's actually three shitot. So what, how do we understand it? Who, who are the authors of these three different brightaot? Again, let's just speak it outside before we see it inside. Brightaot number one says, you're not allowed to move the shofar or the chatzot on Shabbat. Brightaot number two says, that's the first brightaot. Brightaot number two says, you're allowed to move shofar and not chatzot. But the, the problem is we, but okay, but the problem is we gave a pircha on that because we said you want to make a. You're right, but the problem with that is we said you want to make a chiluk Rav Yosef between Yachid and Sibu. Sibu also has a usage which is for Tinokani. and the third brayta says that both of them are permitted to move on Shabbat. So what's the pshat? So it says Abayi a different pshat. Abayi says there's actually three tanaim and each of them is of the different brayta. So says Aba, says uh, says Abaye, Ella. So says Abaye, a different pshat. He says Lokasha. Ha, Rabbi Yehuda. Now let's just remember, we have really Masechta, so many different arguments. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon. The rule between all of them pretty much it's is usually machmir and is makel. Exactly, Rabbi Yehuda is machmir. All of these things. Which Rabbi Yehuda is that? The Tana, Rabbi Yehuda. No Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Loi. Chorah, it's Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Loi. I believe the great Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Loi. I believe so. So. Rabbi Yehuda is the Machmir, Rabbi Shimon is the Mekir, and all these things, Davar Shaino Mitkaven, Klish Mechdol Yisur, also, all of these things are things that Rabbi Yehuda is generally the Machmir, Muktzeh, Nolad, all of those things we discussed. Rabbi Yehuda is the Machmir, he holds that more things are Asur on Shabbat, and Rabbi Shimon is more Mekir, he's less inclusive. So says the Gemara like less this. Less inclusive? Less inclusive, means inclusive. less things, are, he's less kolel, isurim in Shabbat. Is machmer inclusive? No. No, inclusive, inclusive means gathered in. Kolel includes That's people. Inclusive. Means he doesn't include so many things in the Yisur. So says Rabbi Abayi like this. Abayi says, the second Braita, let's start with that. Ha, Rabbi Yehuda. The second Braita is Rabbi Yehuda. Now, the second Braita said, you're allowed to move shofar and not the chatzot So let's speak out why. The trump, trumpet is Klish Melachto Leisu. So says Rabbi Yehuda, Asu, you're not allowed to move that on Shabbat. Sure. Now, Shofar is also clean. You say it's a problem too. But since Shofar has a permissible usage, which is to feed a child, so in that Rabbi Yehuda is Mekil. He's lenient and he says, you could move the Shofar even though it's something that its primary usage, its main usage, its Ikar usage is Isu. But since it has a usage that's mutar, you're allowed to move that on Shabbat. That's Rabbi Yehuda. Let's just write it. In. That's Rabbi Yehuda. Okay. Now, that's Ha Rabbi Yehuda. Ha Rabbi Shimon. The third brayta which says mutar b'shtehem is Rabbi Shimon. Why is it Rabbi Shimon? Because Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon holds not only is it mutar to move a shofar that has some sort of a permissible usage, but even a stam klishim lachdole isur. 
is allowed to be moved on Shabbat. So he's, he's still the Rabbi most make more strict. He is more strict. Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon is. doesn't hold it. He says, Kriyish Mahatol, you can move him, Kriyish Mahatol is so on Shabbat, so you can even La move the trumpets. How, how can then? he let Chatotza to move on Shabbat? Because he doesn't even, when Kriyish Mahatol, even Kriyish Mahatol is so can be moved on Shabbat, ah, wow. according to Rabbi Shimon. So that's how we get to that Sugiah. So that's how we that when we get that sugya, we'll discuss this more. But that's the position of Rabbi Shimon. Even Klishim Lachtoli is so is mutalitantel. Rabbi Shimon is less machmir when it comes to muktze. So you can move that also. We'll see. And ah, uh, the first one, the first breita that said you can't move either of them, Rabbi Nechemia. It is the position of Rabbi Nechemia. Rabbi Nechemia Rabbi so is, is the most strict now. Rabbi Nechemia is the most machmir in this about Klish and Achdole Yisro. What's the pshat Rabbi Nechemia? So he says like this. He says, when we look at a Kli, Shem Achdole Yisro, ah. even if there's some way that it could be used in a permitted way, <laughs> we don't care about the potential use, we care about what is the Ikar yes, use, yes. the main use. So therefore, since the main use of Shofar is from Melachto Le exactly. So therefore you can't even move but that on But you can say it also about the hammer with the, the nuts. Exactly. You would apply this over there too, the Chaura can. So therefore, you look at what's the main use but of the still, item. Well, and therefore you can't If I need a hammer for, for nuts, yeah. it's a lot. That's if you hold the Vash. Klish Melachto Le Yisur is muta when, you're, when, when it has a permitted use. Exactly. But Rabbi Nechemi disagrees. Rabbi Nechemi disagrees. But you know, uh, it's really make a lot of sense Rabbi Nechemi, the most I think so. Yeah. That Chatzotza, it's a clear... And the Bemet, Roba Peami, Mosim Shofar, Tokim Bo. Yeah. The part of Mafid, the Machit, the Tino Kabla, Bemet, Rov Shimushole, by the way, this this Lashon, it's been over the many, many, many times. By Echsher Shekilim. Marov Shimushu, the Pesach, the Muhat. Exactly. Marov Shimushu. I'm bearing with Tamesh Bozal Omer. Ashkadim, but I'm not. Meaning, like Agala, Agala, and different things. What is the Rov Shimush? That's what I'm talking about. Beautiful, beautiful. I think so. I hear. Very good. What's that? What's that? We have to look it up. That I don't want to pass. You have to look it up. Everybody hears the Shitot. Yeah. We have to look it up after. Zat Hashem. Shofar? Shofar? No, we have to look it up. We have to look it up Shofar after. Shofar and Muktzeh, what? You know what I have actually in this? I see uh, the Psaq Lama, seems to Lama. be... I see a Psaq over Rabbi Shimon's words, which would appear that we're making. If you look in the Gemara, if you look in the Gemara, if you look in the Gemara, you see on the fourth line of the page, if you look in the Gemara, the fourth line of the page, look, yeah. you see that little Aleph above the words Harabi Shimon? Yes. So usually, that little Aleph brings you to the En Mishpat Neum Mitzvah, and it tells you the source to look up the Alakha. If on, uh, on the left side of the page, the little Aleph, so it tells you where to look it up. But the point is, usually that means we pass him like that, Shita. Usually. To look it up, to be clear, it would appear to me that we're Mekil on this, Inyan. But uh, I have to look it up after, I don't want to pass him. Anyways, the Kasha we're about to address is... That if Klish Mechdol Yisur would be allowed to be moved on Shabbat. Now, I don't want to pass him, we have to look it up after. The point that comes out is like but this. But we know the Shofar is Muktzeh in Shabbat. The Kasha is like this. The Kasha is, you're telling me the Pshat and Brayta number one is like Rabbi Nechemia. This is going to be the next Kasha. The Brayta now is not read in a, in a normal way. Because which one is the Chidush? Shofar or Chatzotzot? Shofar. Obviously, it's Shofar. Chatzotzot is Pashut, you can't move it because there's not even any permissible usage. So to say that's a sword to move is, is Vada. The, it's, it's a, the Chidush is Shofar. Now, when you say Chidushim, usually you'll say the smaller Chidush and then the bigger Chidush. So the Kasha, the Gemara asks is, once you tell me it's a sword to move the Shofar, Vigam Chatzotzot, but there's no Chidush in that anymore. So how do you read the bright dot like this, the way we're understanding? Ah, it's it should say the other way. That's the kasha. Why does the bright dot now say shofar v'chatzotzot? Really, it should say asur l'taltel chatzotzot v'shofar. No. The chedush. The chatzotzot is like even a bigger chedush. No. Lama. Bigger chedush is shofar. Afinu sheish tashmish muta shel heter ima shofar, aval asur l'taltelo b'shabbat. Chatzotzot pashut shasur l'taltelo b'shabbat because it's something that's completely asur. 
opinion that it is mutar, so it's a... Shofar! Chatzotza also, according to Rabbi Shimon. Okay, but the chidush is in shofar, you're right. But the greater chidush is in shofar. Okay. 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 The way we're okay. learning okay. The, this way... I was thinking that the bigger chidush is chatzotza. What, yeah. I'm, what I'm going to do with chatzotza and shabbat? That's exactly why it's asur. The, the Brayta says asur letalter shofar vechatzotzot. It's kol sheken. Im asur letalter shofar kol sheken shasur letalter chatzotzot. Okay. As the Akasha, the Gemara is about to ask is why would it set it up shofar and then chatzotzot? The Gemara says something fascinating here. Let's see this inside. Ask the. Let's see. Umay shofar nami. So the Gemara says, what is shofar also? Meaning, in the Brayta, Rashi says this, why does it say shofar and then chatzotzot after? It's kol shekin, of course chatzotzot, you're not allowed to move now. So the Gemara answers something fascinating. I read that wrong. Yeah, umay shofar nami, right? So the Gemara answers, what does it mean shofar in the Mishnah? It means chatzotzot. It's a very interesting thing. We're going to see in a minute, after the Chorban, the Amea Aratzot, that's how the Mepharshim explained, the common people, not the Talmidei Chachamim, they knew better, but the common people switched using certain words, which means when the Ama Aratz would say Shofar, he was really talking about Chatzotzot. So when the Bright Das says, Asole Tatel Shofar Vechatzotzot, really it switches. It really means, it really means to say, Asole Tatel now we're not saying that in the other Brayta, just the first Brayta. So, so, so why because of the Amaretz? Very said, interesting. Well, why, why, that why became them? the way that people talk. So when the Brayta wanted to teach the Halacha, so people understand it, wrote it that way. It's a very interesting idea. But now, we're going to see a couple of things that were like this, <laughs> where they switched. They changed no, the terminology. Is, That's what it was. Yeah. No, I don't mean yeah. in a negative way. It's just the Hamon Am talked like that. So Mamela, when it teaches the Brayta, that's what it means to say also. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it didn't change everything. Only the first Brayta. Only the first Brayta. We didn't change anything else. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Where do we find this idea? Only in Bachidush. I want to finish the parak. Let's go. Ten minutes. Let's go. There were three things that the names were changed, were swapped. Mm. They switched the names after Choban Beit HaMikdash. Let's go through them. Number one, Shofara, meaning they used to call trumpets Shofar, and Shofara Chatzotzarta. This is just Aramaic, but it's the same thing. And they switched Shofar to Chatzotzot. Why? I don't know why they switched those, but they switched those. So the Gemara says, "Lemay nafkamina." What if, if Rav Chizda is saying they switch them? It's not just stam to know davar in the world. By the way, they switch them. There must be some halacha this teaches us. So what's the halacha? The shofar shel Rosh Hashanah. The manu it's in Masechet Rosh Hashanah. We know there were times like on Taaniyot, for example, they used Chatzot for example, or Milchamot. So if somebody you're teaching the halacha and you say, use a shofar in Rosh Hashanah, the problem is some people might understand what does that mean? It means chatzotzot. So you have to be very clear with how you teach it because people misinterpret these words. They were switched after the Chorban. That's number one. Number two, arava tzafzifa. Tzafzifa arava. And Sukkot, one of the arba minim is arava. It's willow. Willow of the brook, actually, Rashi says. It's very similar tree. Tzafzifa we talk about this, it looks very much like the Arava, but it's Pasuf Arba Minim. Rashi says, how does the Tzafzifa look? Its leaves are round, and the stem is white. Jagged, okay. Jagged. And Rashi says the stem is white. I believe the Arava, it's redder or greener. So the point is... So the, exactly, that's the problem. So what comes out is, Again, they yeah, swap these words. Like the top. Oh, right, exactly. The extra thing. But my question is... If one second, let me just finish. So again, 
they switched around Aravat Tzavtzefat Tzavtzebara the Mayan Afkamina the Lulav you have to know if you're teaching the Alachot of Lulav so make sure you explain we're talking about this Aravat show a picture it's good to see pictures not the Tzavtzefa even though they were swapped you should make sure people understand that what would you want to say but in, 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 yeah Oh, so B'derech Klal, we don't switch it. That's the second and third bright that kept the same. No. This Tana held for some reason. I don't know. It's an interesting but question. B'derech Klal, we don't do this. We're going to say the end of the sugya. I'll explain. But so far, sugya. No, it doesn't mean Amar so necessarily. In the colloquial language, the people talk. That's how they said it. That's what people say. You know, people say funny things. You know, I'll tell you. You know, Ashkenazim say Shalashudis. Why is it Shalashudis? Sudat Shlishi. Why is it Shalashudis? I have no idea. This was some sort of a bilbul ashon, and it changed it. So that's the way people talk sometimes. Not necessarily Amar Aratzot. It's just that's the way it became. Why? I'm not sure. Instead of saying, uh, I, mean, I don't know, maybe that's Yiddish. I actually don't know what that is. But anyways, the point is, yeah, interesting thing. That's the second one, Shalash The third one is, <laughs> Petora is Petorta. That they switched Petora and Petorta, and Petorta is Petora. Petora is, uh, originally was a large table, Shuchan Gadol, and Petorta is a small table. So they switch the words around. It's for, for transaction, meaning if you're selling something and you say that you're selling Petora, so you have to be clear what you're talking about because some people might think that's Petorta, the small table, or vice versa, because they switch it around. That's exactly the point. There's why an important thing. Why this? I don't know why they switched. It, apparently, when they moved around, the words just switched. That's just how it became. So, Amelia, you have to be careful. For Let's business. say now, in English, the word Ani yeah. was I, yeah. and now it's Hey. Okay. Hey, hey. So now you have to be careful. If eat. You, if you're explaining something, you want to be careful because people might not understand you. People probably. don't understand. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Let's finish up, guys. We have five minutes, and I want to finish the parak. Let's go. Amar Abai. Abai says the following. Af Anu Ne'amar, we also say that there was something that was switched. What was it? Okay. For you up. Also, we say the following. We know when it comes to an animal, a kosher animal, a cow, it has four stomachs, right? We know a kosher animal has four stomachs. Now, let me just tell you outside what they are. There, there's the keres, which is, in English, it's called pounch. I looked this up in art scroll. There's the beta kosot. In English, it's called reticulum. The third one is hemses, which is the omesum. And the third, fourth one is keva. Keva is the maw. The animal usually chews the food, it goes into the first stomach and then the second stomach, comes back up, chews it again, goes into the third and the fourth and it's digested. Now, the word that they used for the third and fourth stomach, for the second and third stomach, they switched after the Khurban. The word that they used. Okay, let me just read it inside and I'll tell you why it's enough Afkamina in a minute. Rabbi, af anu ne'emar hovlila, what they used for the third stomach, which is what we call hemses, bekasi, they used, they, they call, usually they used to call Huvlilo the third stomach bekasi, which is beta kosot, the second stomach. That's what they used to say. But then they switched it after the Khurban and they called bekasi hovlila. Means they switched it to call, they used to call the second stomach, they used to call the third stomach in the cow. So the Gemara says, Lamayna Afkamina. Again, what do I need to know this for? What do I care if they switch the names of these stomachs? So the Gemara answers, there's an afkamina for trefot. Because there's a difference if you find a needle in the second stomach versus if you find it in the third stomach. What do I mean? If you find a needle in the thickness of beta kosot, so the mitzad echad, if it only goes through one side, means it doesn't go completely through the stomach, kshera, the animal is still kosher. But if it's on two sides, trefa. It's a trefa. So Rashi explains like this. The second stomach of the animal, the reticulum it's called, had a very thick lining in the stomach. It was very thick. So it was actually doubled over. If you find a needle on one side, you don't have to assume it went all the way through and you don't have to say it's a trefa. But the third stomach, the hemsis that we called, it's got to go from a different direction. It was very thin. The stomach was very thin. So if you find on one side a needle, you have to be choshesh 
that maybe it went all the way through and it made that animal into a trefun, you can't eat it. But since they switched around the terms of the second and third stomach, you have to be very clear as to what you're talking about because if the sheila comes in front of the chacham and they say, we add in the beikasi, the beikasi used to mean beta kosot, which is the second stomach. But then after the chorban, they actually meant the third stomach. So therefore, in order to be clear if this is a trefa amazing, or not, amazing, amazing. they have to know this point. Let's finish up. Last halacha, last idea here. Amar Avashi, Af Anu Ne'emar. We also had another thing that was changed. Bavel Borsif. Bavel, which was the area of Bavel, the, we used to be called Bavel, and there was another place next to Bavel that was called Borsif. And Borsif Bavel. They switched it around after the Chorban. They started to call Bavel Borsif instead. Meaning is there was two places next to each other. One was Bavel, one was Borsif. Turn to Lavin Bav Bav Mudbet. They switched the names after the Chorban. Lemai Nafkamine, Legite Nashim. The Nafkamine is for Gitin, for divorce documents. So Rashi says two Pshatim here. Pshat number one, Rashi says, is. He says, very interesting. We know the Gemara Mesechet Gitin tells us that most of the areas in the world, they were not bikiin lishma. What does that mean? It means if they wrote a get, we weren't sure that it was written lishma for the sake of this woman. And it says in the Torah, v'katav la sefer kritut v'natan biyada. It has to be lishma. So therefore, if you bring a get, a document of divorce, a shliach brings it to deliver from somewhere else, chutz al to Eretz Yisrael, the shliach has to testify, b'fanai nechtav u b'fanai nechtam. Takanat Chazal, and that tells us it was written and signed in front of me. We know that it was done lishma. Rashi, the Gemara explains in Gitin how we know, but that's the Kitzur. It's tak- Takana. If a get is brought from Bavel, you don't have to ask the question because in Bavel they would be kiin lishma. They would tell me decha chamim. You know that it was done properly. The problem is that's when it was brought from Bavel, but if it's brought from Borsif, you don't know that necessarily. So we have to know, if someone says, I brought the get from Bavel after the Chorban, it could be it was brought from Borsif, so we would have to know that it's Lishma, because they wouldn't necessarily know the Alakha. The second pshat, Rashi says, Va'ani Omer, Rashi says the second pshat, which is, there's a Mishnah, Mesechet Gitin, that says when you write a get, you need to write the location of the man and the woman in the get. But if Shina, Shmo, Ushma, Shem Iro, Shem Ira, if they change the name, they don't write the location of the man or the woman, get is Pasul. So therefore, after the Chorban, you need to write not what it was used, used to be called. The get has to be written based on now, the Mitziut, the reality now. So if now they call Bavel Borsif and they call Borsif Bavel, you'd have to write based on what they call it now for that get to be kosher. Now, just to finish off this sugya, yeah, the Mefarshim to speak out here, that throughout the Gemara, throughout the Shas, throughout the Mishnayot, really what Yochai was asking before, we don't talk on the way people change things. We actually talk on the original way. It means throughout Shas, we talk about the, like in Mesechet Kitin, there's a sugya, I believe in Kiddushin, we talk about the boundaries of Bavel. We're talking about Bavel. We're not talking about uh, what they call it today, what they switched, they made a mistake, etc. Throughout Mishnayot, we keep the original format. Now, things change, that's fine. But the point is, in terms of writing the get, when you write it, it has to be written based on the now. That's what it is. That's why it would have to be but done. Maybe like sometimes the, the change, the, the Bilbul Shal Arshon becomes so common, by the time they put the, the Mishnayot, it, exactly. it was too late, it kind of be. too late, kind it of could too late. Be. Could because be. spread it all over the it's yeah. Mama Shlit Fas, yeah. Fas Hashem is it. It could be, it could be. I mean, the only thing about that is, we have ma- like that's what the Mefarshim name Ma'amari Chazal usually Shnayot Mara. We're gonna keep to what it was. Like in the case of the the cow, the four stomachs, we call it the, the right thing. Beta Kosot is the second one. Bekasi is the second one. We don't call. We don't necessarily switch it, but we're aware that some people do mela so that they should learn the right halacha. Adran alach b'mem adlekin. Adran alach b'mem adlekin. Adran alach b'mem adlekin. Be'ezat Hashem. We'll start the third parak next week Sunday. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, Zakabaroch. Oh,